Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah and as I was thinking of um, the kinds of content uh, that might be nice to do next here on the YouTube channel, um, because it's prime knitting season, it's autumn here in Vermont and the cold weather settling in, uh, I thought it might be nice to do um, some sort of tips and tricks and opinions about knitting um, and knitting products for you. And so I'm going to start that series off with a two-parter on knitting needles. Um, this is going to be basically a review series on the knitting needles that I've been using the most and the things that I like the best. Um, and a compare and contrast on a couple of brands of needles that I've been using for the past year or so. Um, now I should say up front uh, a couple of things. One is that this is not a paid promotion in any way. Um, none of these companies have contacted me in any way. Um, all of the needles I'm going to show you I either purchased with my own money or they were purchased gifts for me, uh, purchased by friends and relatives. So, um, you know, it's a very straightforward, honest review, and that's exactly how it's intended. Um, I'm not here to uh, disparage any company, um, but I will be pointing out things that either I wish, you know, they had done differently or that I think could work a little bit better. Basically some, you know, R&D kind of um, feedback on, on a couple of these styles of needles. Um, that said, I'm not going to review any needles that I simply do not like. Um, there are a couple brands I've tried in the past that I, I don't like at all. I'm not even going to bother with those. Um, and the other caveat I will say is, you know, like anything else, personal opinion is personal opinion, and this is just my personal opinion. So if you disagree with me, that's completely cool. If you prefer a different kind of needle style, or if you like a particular brand that I'm not mentioning here, that's awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, I'm not here to tell you that you need to like throw out the needles you have and buy the ones that I have. Um, it's just a kind of compare and contrast because I've tried out several different kinds and I like certain things about each of them. Um, so that might be helpful for you if you are either shopping for um, a new set of needles or you know maybe you're dropping hints as we lead up to the holiday uh, gift giving season. Um, maybe you're thinking about trying some new needles and you wanna drop a hint. Um, um, so our first brand of interchangeable circular needles are a brand that's made right here in Vermont um, and they are called Diac Craft. Um, Dyak, D-Y-A-K, and uh, that is the, the family name of the person um, that makes these. And um, I have two sets of these interchangeables. Um, so this one is a, a five inch set, a five inch tip set. And then they also make a three and a half inch tip set. And that is um, handy for knitting smaller circumference um, for things like sweater sleeves or hats. Um, so I do actually have both. Um, I acquired the long ones first. Um, I know these were a gift um, several years ago, maybe seven or eight years ago now, um, quite a while ago. And then the shorter ones I think were a follow-up the year later because I wanted to have kind of a matching set. Um, they come in those two lengths lengths and these uh, in particular are called their anodized or their northern light series. These are anodized aluminum and they're solid aluminum. Um, because they're aluminum that helps cut down on the weight but because they're solid metal rather than hollow they actually do have a little bit of heft to them especially this larger five inch um, and this is a US size 8 needle um, that definitely weighs something in the hand. So they're not the lightest weight um, needles are the ones I'm going to cover today but they're certainly, um, they don't feel too heavy in the hand, I guess is what I would say. Um, they have kind of a powder coated finish on them, so they're not super shiny. Um, and that finish does start to wear off eventually. I'm gonna hold this tip. If you look at the very tip of this needle, you can kind of see it's a little shinier than the rest of it. And so after you've knit several sweaters, which is what this has been through, and probably a bunch of hats too, um, you do start to lose the finish on the very tip of the needle. Um, but I don't think that impacts the knitting experience at all. Um, you know, they're certainly not... The feel of them has not changed at all, um, both with when I feel them and when I knit with them. So 
That's not really a complaint, it's just an observation. Um, they have a nice smooth finish. I do like the join on these. So they come with these cables, um, and this is a sh very short cable for like knitting a, a hat or something. Um, the short cable size came with the three and a half inch tip. So they just screw on like this. And you know the join is, is good. It's very smooth. Once the um, collar on the cable is attached to the needle, you cannot see it at all. And um, the cables do kind of get crimped as you work. Um, but that doesn't really affect the way that the yarn slides around. That join, even though it looks bent, is actually very smooth and the yarn glides over really well. Um, the other aside, I should have said this in the beginning, um, but all of, all of the interchangeables that I like and use regularly have a swivel so that the cable um, moves freely inside the needle. I can turn the needle. I don't know if you can see this, but this needle is actually swiveling around. Um, so I won't be reviewing um, popular brands like the Leica set, um, the Chiagus, uh, or any other set that does not swivel. Um, swiveling on the cable is an absolute must for me personally. Um, and so the, if the cables don't swivel on the interchangeables, I don't even bother, um, you know, trying them out because I just, I, I've knit with fixed cables before, uh, fixed cables that are bonded onto the, the needle head itself, and they just don't work for me. Okay, so um, back to these. Uh, I do like these a lot. Um, I've had, my only complaint is that I've had trouble with them unscrewing, um, but the thing about a, a needle unscrewing from the cable is that you, you do get some warning. You can kind of feel that as you're knitting, and in general, I don't lose stitches off of um, the needle when it's you know partially unscrewed, you might get a loop of yarn, a stitch down in there, and that's annoying because you have to kind of fish it out and get it back up on the needle before you can screw this back in. Um, but I'll talk about a remedy for this in just a second. The other thing I'll point out is that you don't need any kind of special tool. There's no hole in here for a tightener. Um, you know that might have helped eliminate the unscrewing problem. I don't know. Um, the hole is also handy if you want to put in a lifeline, especially if you're knitting something complicated like brioche or lace, that's where it's difficult to fix your errors as you're as you're knitting along. Um, it's nice to be able to um, thread a piece of dental floss through the needle, and then as you knit one row, that dental floss is pulled along with you, and then you have that stiff piece of um, fiber uh, holding your stitches on that row, and that way if you have to rip back, you're not going to rip back too much or lose stitches um, and make a small problem into a big problem. Um, so that would be my only thing that I'd want to see added on here is a hole um, in the needle head, or sorry, the cable head, um, so that you could add a lifeline easily. Um, but there are other ways to do that. You can just you know use a darning needle and string a lifeline in. Um, like I said, these I've had probably the longest, definitely the longest, and I do like them overall. They're not terribly pointy. Um, I would say the three and a half inch seem to appear to be a little pointier. Um, the, the taper on these is a little bit longer. So the three and a half inch might be a little bit easier if you're working something like cables where you have to, or, or a, a funky lace pattern where you have to do something like purl to, through, through the back loop a lot. Um, it might be nicer to have a slightly pointier point on here, but I'm, I like a medium point for most of my knitting. I do knit quite a bit of stockinette and, and not very complicated knitting, so these are certainly pointy enough for me. Um, and they feel good in the hand. They're not too slippery. Um, they are slippery because they're metal, but they're not exceptionally slick, so they have a little bit of drag on that anodized aluminum finish. And overall, I would recommend these um, with the caveat that they are expensive. So um, let me talk a little bit about the options for the Diet Craft needle sets. Like I said, they come in the two lengths um, and in the Northern Lights each pair of needles is sold for about $33 and the way that they do it is they have you mix and match to put a set together. Um, now the mix and match is a little bit um, 
of a misnomer in my opinion because they consider a set to be eight pairs of needles but they only have eight sizes sizes us 3 through 10 so I guess you could mix and match like some short ones and some long ones if you typically knit hats with a shorter thing and something else with a long, I don't know. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, the way that they're kind of marketing this or selling it. So basically, the set is all of the sizes. Um, you don't get any price break, but you do get some extras like extra cables, some stoppers, and a little case for them. Um, but the the set of eight need pairs of needles uh, retails for two hundred and sixty three dollars. So that's you know that's pretty high um, compared to the other ones I'm going to talk about today. Um, if it's in your budget and you know you care about either supporting like a U.S. manufacturer or a small business, um, then certainly I'm sure that's worth every penny. And it's it's nice to know that your money is going to support a family and not a big corporation. Um, but I also get that that's, you know, that, that would be definitely top of price range for myself. Um, like I said, these were gifted to me, so um, thank you, Mom. <laughs> but that's just something to bear in mind. The other uh, offerings from Diet Craft, they do make their needles in other materials. So they have a black nickel finish, um, which is the anodized aluminum again, but they're coated in a black finish. And those are even more expensive. They're almost $40 for a pair. And again, you can put together a set for yourself. Um, but that looks like it would be pushing $300 for a set. Um, they also have something they called heavy metal, uh, which are solid stainless steel. So those would be, those would be heavier than these solid aluminum um, needles. The nice thing about those is that they come in a smaller size range, so where the aluminums um, end at a size 3 on the smaller sizes, the heavy metals go down to a US 0. So a US 0 through 3 are what those are sold as, and you can get them in as small as a 1.75 inch um, tip length. You can also get the 3.5 and the 5 in the heavy metals. So if you knit a lot of lace um, or, I don't know, I guess a lot of socks or something and you need a shorter needle for that or you just need a smaller um, diameter needle, the heavy metals would be the way to go. Those right now, as of the time of recording, uh, which is mid-October 2019, are on sale on their website. So if you're watching this around that time, the sale price on pairs of needles are between $16 and $20. And again, you can put together sets. Um, so, you know, check that out. I don't know what the normal retail price is. They don't list it on the site right now. They just have the sale price. Um, the other option from Diet Craft is their wood options, what they call, they call turnings. And those also run in the either five inch length or the three and a half inch length. Those they do sell in prepackaged sets and those sets run $350. Um, so again, quite expensive. Um, I'm sure they're very high quality, just as these aluminum ones are. I will say that these are, you know, they're really well engineered. Um, I can tell it's, it's the woman is the kind of concept designer, and then it's her husband who it was worked for an aircraft production company. Um, so he understands, you know, tolerances and, you know, how to shape metal really consistently and really beautifully. Um, so despite their high price, I do think that they're very also very high quality. Um, but that said, they are you know, the most expensive needles I'm gonna talk about today. Probably not the most expensive on the market. I'm guessing signatures are probably even more than these are, but I don't have signatures. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, another way that you can save money on these though is that they do have a seconds section in their online store. Uh, which is dietcraft.com, and I will put links to all these makers in the um, in the show notes for this episode. So check out their second section, or keep an eye on it. Maybe sign up for their newsletter if they have like coupons or sales. Um, you could save some money on them that way. So that's Dietcraft. Um, I'm not going to give like a you know a star rating or anything. I would just say they're very well made. Um, I've been using mine for a very long time, and I do like them overall. Um, I like them even more now that I've solved this um, unscrewing problem for myself, which again, I'll talk about in a minute. Um, 
and I would recommend them with the caveat that, you know, I understand that not everybody's budget is going to accommodate the price point for these. Um, so there you go. All right, next up are hedgehog fibers, and I have to show the case. Um, hedgehog fibers are a company out of Ireland, and they do make, um, they're mostly known for their yarn, um, which comes in bright neons, a lot of like crazy speckles and amazingly overpowering uh, colorways. <laughs> um, and that kind of continues with their accessory sets. So this is uh, a very blingy holographic gold um, plasticine that they use for their case. And then the needles themselves um, are a rose gold finish. So, you know, more bling if you're in, I think you can see the rose better if I hold it up this way, but more bling for you if you're into like the, the fancy shiny pinky stuff. Um, I will admit I did not get these based on the color. I got them based on the pointiness and on the recommendation from another podcaster um, who had reviewed these and given them high marks. And um, at the time I was kind of frustrated with my diet crafts for unscrewing. And so I thought, okay, if I can find something that uses a different um, attachment mechanism, then, you know, that that's going to solve my problem. Um, so that's kind of why I ordered them. Um, these come as a larger set than the diet craft. So here you have 11 pairs of needles. Um, they go down as far as size US 2, so you get one size smaller, and up to an 11. So you get um, 9s, 10s, 10 and a halves, and 11s. Um, they come with six cables in two different textures, which I will show you. So these are the cables. And they come one of one of each in each texture. So they have a stiff version, um, which doesn't really bend more than about that. And then they have a floppy version, which is like a flaccid version, really. Um, and this may not look as floppy as it is on camera, but trust me, once you have any weight of a knitted item on this, it basically hangs down like that with a very sharp angle. So you've got your needle See, where'd my needle go? You've got your needle attached. And then you've got your knitting on here and it basically hangs down here, which means that your stitches cannot flow up nicely onto your needle and onto um, you know, the gangway to become knitted if you're if you're working. So I do not like these needle these uh, cables at all. I think they're completely useless and I don't know why they include them in the package. I would just rather have more of these stiff ones that are still plenty flexible, um, but actually hold your knitting up so that you can move your stitches onto the needle to be, to get knit. Um, like I said, the reason I purchased these was uh, because of the attachment hardware. So instead of a screw, you have this little alligator clip looking thing. I think if I hold it right here, you can kind of see. So there's two prongs with a little gap, and then each prong has a little divot, uh, one on the top and one on the bottom. Can you see that? So the way these work is that the divots slide into uh, this part of the needle, and they click in here. And so these little these little bumps here kind of grab onto the inside of the end of the needle and lock into place. And then this does swirl. So how can I hold this? So you can see this needle pivot. Watch the little hole. It rotates around as I rotate my finger. Okay. So there you go, they swivel. Um, now this might look like you could thread a lifeline through because it has that little hole here, but you can't because sometimes it's blocked because that hole is actually part of the attachment mechanism to attach the cable onto the needle. So again, no option for a lifeline here. Um, this is a very dramatic uh, change in 
diameter to get from the hardware up to the full circumference of the needle. And so I did find that a little fiddly, trying to scooch uh, stitches around sometimes. Also, where that hole is, it's a little bit rough. If I run my hand over that, I can definitely feel it. It's a bit sharp. And so for a very delicate yarn or for a lace weight, you know, thin yarn, I might be worried about that getting caught on there. I didn't actually have, I knit this sweater on these needles and I didn't have that problem, but this is an Aran weight wool yarn. And so it's not, it's not going to be as delicate or as fiddly to knit with as a thinner yarn. Um, I did like the finish. It's nice and smooth and the, the tips are pretty pointy. They have a very dramatic um, taper from the full diameter down to the point. So they're quite stabby and um, they would be great for knitting, you know, lace or cables or something like that where you want to really get in there and get a bunch of loops and do some complicated stitch. Um, they are a better monetary value than the Diet Craft, I think. Um, they're definitely less expensive. So for the extra pairs, for 11 pairs of needles versus eight, um, they are about 210 US dollars. Um, they retail for 189 euros because they're, again, it's an Irish company. So, and you have to buy direct from them on their website. That includes free international shipping. So that's a nice thing. Um, they come with this nice case. They come with uh, a bunch of cables and they come with the little, you have to use a special like tweezer tool to get this to pinch those prongs together and get the cable off. And they come with two of those, which is nice. So you can keep one maybe with the needles and then one in a travel bag if you needed to, or just a spare if you lose it. Um, something I forgot to mention about the diet crafts that's true also of the hedgehog fibers is that these are not marked in any way. So you do have to use a needle gauge to, to make sure you have the right size of needle when you're, when you're selecting them. And that's something that kind of irritates me. I think if you're, if you're not going to mark the size on the needle, you should include some kind of measuring device with your set so that I don't have to go buy a separate one or fish around or something like that. Um, this is a, a cheap one from Knit Picks, um, which is a discount knitting supply place on they only sell online. Um, but I like this because it has a magnified... Uh, um, viewfinder here for the ruler so you can count your stitches and then it has this needle gauge um, but uh, and hedgehog fibers actually do make a needle gauge um, but they sell it separately so please include the needle gauge in with the set guys um, I don't know I, I sound like I'm really down on this hedgehog fibers one but it's not that it's just that it did pop open um, a number of times when I was knitting the sweater. So instead of that kind of gradual unscrewing that you get with the screw connector, when that fails, it's it's gradual and you can kind of catch it in time. On this, it's an instantaneous failure. And the way that I knit, um, I think might have something to do with this. I think I'm putting a lot of pressure on this join with my pinky when I knit. And so what happens is the prongs start out, the prongs inside the needle, Here's the prongs, here's the needle. The prongs inside the needle start out like this, and then as I'm working, they kind of move around and they get pinched together as I'm uh, pushing my work along the cable like this and pulling. And eventually that just suddenly lets go. And what happens is you then have, you know, 10, 20 live stitches that aren't on the needle and aren't on the cable. They're just out in midair. Um, and that happened a few times while I was knitting this sweater with this heavy air and weight yarn. It was very frustrating. Um, a couple of times I had to go back several rows because the failure happened while I was knitting these eyelet increases and I couldn't exactly figure out where I was. Um, and <laughs> it's just very stressful. Like you're trying to finish a row and then go to bed and then your needle pops open and you have to spend the next half hour trying to rescue your project um, of unplanned time. So I don't know. And I don't know if that's just my style of knitting. Maybe some knitters are less hard on their needles and, or their way of holding or making stitches, um, doesn't put so much stress on this joint. And so I don't know how universal my experience is. I do, I have talked to some people that have used Addy needles, 
um, which have a similar kind of click mechanism. It's, it's, you know, supposedly this is like a patented thing and it's its own um, way of connecting a cable to a needle. But I think the Addies are kind of a similar concept where they click in. And I've also heard from some people that they have ex same, uh, experienced the same kind of catastrophic failure um, where the, the cable just pops off of the end of the needle unexpectedly with no warning. And again, you've got, you know, 10 to 20 live stitches hanging out. So that's a pretty big caveat with these. Um, I don't know, you know enough about machining and design to know whether they can effectively fix that uh, with this design. Um, I do, I do like the pointiness and the needle itself. It's just, it's just this, this and also this floppiness <laughs> really don't like. So I'm not sure I can 100% recommend these. Um, but I would say if you have a, like if you have a friend who has them or something, ask if you can borrow them and see what you think. Um, and I'd be curious if any of you have actually purchased these and have used them. Um, for a larger project, you know, what your experience has been. Um, like I said, these are a better deal than the Diet Craft. Still kind of pricey, but um, you get more needles for less money with them. And um, again, Hedgehog occasionally does have uh, a second sale. I actually got mine on, on sale, so I saved uh, 20 euros off that uh, full price of 189 euros when they were having a second sale. And you cannot tell. The reason they were seconds was because they had a streaky finish on some of the needles. Um, it wasn't a smooth, flat uh, color. And I honestly couldn't even tell you which ones were the seconds and which were the, the regular ones. So um, it's not a big deal there. And the other thing about the Hedgehog is that this is the only size, color, and material that they make. They make one kind of interchangeable set. Um, it is a five inch tip and it comes in this rose gold aluminum finish. And so if you wanted a different finish or a different pointiness or a different length, um, none of those options are, are available. It's just one set. Um, so the third set that I want to talk about are these Haya Haya steels. And they come in a nice little case, cloth case. It has a zipper pocket on the back. And in here, I like to keep my cables. Um, each cable comes in a little bag that's marked with the length. So if you if you can remember to put things back in the right order, um, that works out really well. Also, the cable itself has a marking on it, I just realized. So it might be kind of difficult to see. But that has writing on it. Can you see that? Yeah, faintly. It says 42 inch. Uh, cable. So that's really nice. Um, these are again are a nice, uh, they're flexible, but they're a stiff plastic. So they're, they're similar to the stiffness. They're a little thinner, but they're similar to the stiffness of the stiffer um, Hedgehog Fibers cables. But they're not so stiff that they're problematic. I'm, I never felt like I was wrestling with them. Um, the needles, so they come in this case, you flip it open, and then you have this little like guard to keep, keep your tips safe and clean. And then the needles themselves look like this. And again, the needles are also marked, they're etched. I think you can see that. Uh, with the size, so these say Haya Haya 7 US 4.5 mm. Uh, so they have both the US and the metric sizes. These do screw on. So they screw on like that. And the Haya Haya steels are a hollow steel needle. So they're steel, they are, they're strong, but they're hollow. So they're incredibly lightweight. They're lighter weight than any of the other needles that I've talked about here. Um, again, the cable does swivel. So you can see I'm holding on to the plastic part 
and swiveling the cable. So that's good. And you have this little tightening hole here for a tool. So that hole can also be used to, to put in a lifeline um, if you wanted to put in a lifeline for your lace project or your brioche project. So that's really nice. And let me show you the tightening mechanism for this. It comes in two pieces. Sorry, this is kind of small. So you have the little T-pin, which you could use just a regular, like a knitting uh, blocking pin or something, or even a paper clip. So you, thread, you put that through the hole on the cable, and then it comes with this little silicone grabby thing. It's a little piece of silicone matting like you would use for like a silicone baking sheet or something. Um, but it's a, just a small oval and you hold onto the needle with that and then tighten with the little T-pin thing in the hole and that gives you a nice tight fit. And once this is tightened on here, I have never had these unscrew. And I have knit an entire sweater with these as well. I've also knit a number of accessories with these. Um, so bravo to Haya Haya for getting, getting the hardware just right and making it so that it really does not unscrew. Um, now I was going to tell you about my problem solving with my diet crafts. So these don't have the hole, um, but Haya Haya includes two of these little grabby guys in their set. So what I learned is if I hold my diet craft needle with one of the grabbers and hold the cable join hardware with the other and really tighten as tight as I can and pinch as tight as I can, that is you know, 95% less likely to come unscrewed. Um, it's really helped a lot. And it's made me actually fall back in love with my diet crafts. I was on the fence about these um, because they're kind of a luxury brand. I thought, well, maybe I'll just sell these <laughs> on an online auction and buy some other stuff. But I'm actually gonna keep these now because I've solved that unscrewing problem and that was really the only problem I, I had ever had with these. So thank you to Haya Haya for actually improving my experience with another brand. Um, the Haya Hayas come in a smaller set, uh, so they actually break up their sizing among two sets. The one that I have uh, are a four inch tip. And again, these are the Haya Haya steels. So a four inch length, they also come in a five inch length, which would be comparable to, let me grab the right one here, comparable to these. Um, and I guess they're counting this in the length too. Um, so that's interesting. They count kind of the cable uh, join hardware here. Um, but anyway, there's that for your comparison. So four inch. So you can see this, the top one is three and a half. The middle one is the high, high of four inch. And then the bottom one is the five. Um, I like this four inch. It's more, it's a little bit more comfortable than the three and a half, which is a little bit short and my pinky kind of hangs off the end of the needle. Um, but it's still short enough that I can knit small diameter items and not have a, a needle that's too long, a needle tip that's too long. If you wanted something a little bit longer, like I said, they do make this in a five. Um, and their sets, I was starting to explain and interrupted myself. So their sets come like this and they have two sizes. Their small set uh, runs from a US 2 to a US 8 and then their large set runs from a 9 to a 15. Um, both sets are available in either the 4 inch or the 5 inch length and the sets run $84. So even if you bought both sets and you had from a US 2 up to a US 15 you would still only be spending $168 for the two, and that's less expensive than either the diacrafts or the hedgehog fibers, and it's got a lot more sizes. So I think it's a fantastic deal. Um, the Haya Hayas also come in what they call a Haya Haya Sharp. So it's another steel knitting needle, but it's got a pointier, a sharper, pointier tip. Um, and I'm thinking about getting a set of those for knitting a cabled sweater that I want to make. Uh, the Haya Hayas also come in a bamboo. 
um, option for the needle tip. And again, both the sharps and the bamboos come in either the four inch or the five inch. Um, I really, really like these. I think it's a tremendous value. And I know that part of the reason that they're able to offer that is they're a larger company than either Hedgehog or Giant Craft. And these are also made in China. So you have the advantage of the cheaper labor there. Um, so, but that said, um, they're incredibly well made. I feel like these are super high quality and I would hardly recommend these as, you know, a beginner um, interchangeable set or a budget interchangeable set. Um, there are a number of interchangeable sets out there on the market um, that are well known and have been around for a while and they're just not, they're not nearly as well made as I think these are. I've had a lot of trouble with those with actually the hardware of the cable separating from the cable itself. So it's not that it unscrews or pops like the other problems I've mentioned. What I'm talking about is actually a, a failure of the product itself where the plastic cable comes out of this join part. Um, so, you know, for that reason, I would not recommend those needles at all. I've had it happen multiple times. And even though they have a money back guarantee, that doesn't help you when it's 10 o'clock at night and your thing is just broken, right? Anyway, sidebar. Um, so highly recommend the Haya Haya steels. Um, I think in terms of the needle and the overall cable and everything, they're pretty similar to the Chiagos, um, which are also a Chinese brand. However, the Haya Hayas have the swivel action and the Chiagos are fixed. So they, they don't turn on the cable. And like I said, that's a, that's a deal breaker for me. Um, I really like these. I would even be willing to try them in a bamboo potentially, um, even though I don't normally go in for interchangeable bamboos. Um, yeah, it's very tempting to kind of run out and get all of them because they're so affordable. So again, I hope this was helpful. Um, Haya Hayas are the clear winner to me, although if you wanted to um, splash out on kind of a luxury buy, or again, if you were big into buying local or buying um, American brands, I would recommend the Diet Crafts. And I would love to also hear from you all what your favorite brands of needles are and what you're using. Um, if there's something new out there on the market in the last year or so that I haven't heard about, please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And um, next week, I'm going to be reviewing uh, DPNs and fixed circular needles um, because I have quite a few of those also and I didn't want uh, this episode to be two hours long. So um, stay tuned for that and uh, happy knitting. Hope your knitting season is off to a great start and that you're having fun on whatever project you're working on. Thanks a lot and have a great week. <laughs>